The Binding of Isaac might be one of the first games to come to mind in the modern roguelike genre, but that doesn't mean it's not the best out there, according to Metacritic. Taking roguelike gameplay into a dungeon-crawling environment that has been torn off from classic The Legend of Zelda games, it's hard not to love this indie gem. The graphics and gameplay are very easy and more than enough to grab anyone who is a fan of this genre. The story is also very bizarre compared to many other thugs, as the players follow Isaac, as he escapes from his religiously insane mother, while trying to kill him. One of the most well-known roguelike dungeon crawlers in recent years, Darkest Dungeon is famous for being not only incredibly fun, but also incredibly difficult. Darkest Dungeon took a turn-based RPG focused on positioning and adding elements such as madness, deadly death, and survival mechanics, turning an extremely simple experience into one of the best indie games available on Switch. Despite being a great title, Darkest Dungeon suffers from being inaccessible to players unfamiliar with games with similar mechanics. Crypt of the Necrodancer, one of the strangest games in terms of concept on Switch, takes a standard dungeon roguelike, and adds a rhythm mechanic to the mix. The minds behind this title could easily use pre-existing music, but instead, they created one of the best music to play, and some of the best soundtracks in a video game to date. Will the cadence of Hyrule, Zelda-themed spin-off misses making the top 10 Switch roguelikes on Metacritic, it's no less good, and also includes some great stuff on the classic Zelda tracks. This pixel art roguelike looks more like it was pulled from Stardew Valley, as both games have a very similar art style and color palette. However, Undermine's dungeon crawl combat is closer to the binding of Isaac or Moonlighter, the methodical farming simulation. But it attracts actors and has managed to gain attention in the best ways. Combined with RPG mechanics that allow players to further customize their equipment, Undermine is not a game to be overlooked for fans of thugs. Enter the Gungeon could easily become a generic roguelike dungeon crawler, but Dodge Roll decided to do it all on the ridiculous premise, and play a truly engaging and fun game. As the title suggests, players must enter the Gungeon, a dungeon full of references to firearms and ammunition of all kinds, when using weapons that are not out of place in worms, such as bananas and peas. Shooters that fire real peas. Will the appropriately titled sequel, Exit the Gungeon, took the game in a different direction, it did not quite meet the standard set by its predecessor, although it also stemmed from the status of a mobile game. On paper, Dicey Dungeon should work nowhere as close as it is, combining text-heavy combat reminiscent of tabletop RPGs, and a combat system quite similar to card-based games. However, this game achieves this with a fascinating style of cartoon art found in similarly drawn games like the comedy, Night in the Woods, and a surprisingly deep and entertaining game that gives a fresh breath of an inflated genre. Downwell is probably the most minimalist roguelike game on Switch, but that doesn't mean it's any less good than its rivals. Featuring a firearm-based gameplay similar to Enter the Gungeon, Downwell's players must pass levels as they fall into an endless well, while trying to make their way to the bottom. This game has been around for quite some time compared to the others, but after its first release in 2015, it comes to Switch in 2019, but that doesn't mean Downwell hasn't acquired a handful of new fans. Many people might rightly think Dead Cells is the best roguelike game on Switch, but Metacritic thinks otherwise. Taking on the procedurally generated Metroidvania worlds that make Risk of Rain so popular and add a much more colorful universe to explore, Dead Cells is not only one of the best roguelike games on Switch, but also considered one of the best roguelike games of all time. Dead Cells is also almost impossible to complete because developers are constantly adding more content to keep the game fresh, even after hundreds of hours of death. From the makers of FTL comes a roguelike tactical RPG, similar to the likes of Faster Than Light, XCOM, or Fire Emblem, which are unfortunately not on Switch. But in this case, Into the Breach goes to the more sci-fi setting where the player controls three mechanisms in the battle against giant monsters called Vak, who will give nothing to destroying humanity. What sets this game apart from other tactical RPGs, is how it telegraphs an enemy's attacks, and adds a layer of strategy not seen in similar titles. Hades is one of the best new games on Switch, and one of Supergiant Games' biggest games. Diablo-style roguelikes have been tried before, like Children of Mortar, it gained a huge fanbase after coming to the console, but no matter how good this game was, it didn't reach the same heights as Hades. 
What makes this game so great is its intense emphasis on Greek mythology, that made titles such as the God of War series so popular in the past, and its graphic style is a breath of fresh air, compared to the mountain of pixel art games, P. Thank you for watching the video. If you liked the video, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to the page.